Hello, woman up world. Oh my goodness, it's Friday. Yay. Hello, hello. Can you see us? Can anybody see us? I see us. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking, I don't see us. Yay, it is Friday. Oh my goodness, it's Friday. It is Fierce Female Friday. And boy, do we have a fierce female in the house today. Whoop, whoop. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so of course we have our traditional flow here. So as we are welcoming folks in, please let us know where you are watching from today. Are you in a mountain cabin? Are you sequestered at home? Are you on your deck? Are you by a fireplace in Australia? Where are you? I see you too, Pat Veely. <laughs> uh, Pat's back. Woo! Hey, Angie. <laughs> Hi, Sandra. Excellent. Okay, so we have uh, a quick update from Sarah. And then, of course, Leslie is going to share her famous economic updates. Um, and then we're going to interview the fabulous Ms. Pat Heller. And do not miss the end of the show because we are going to show you, we are finally unveiling the location for the virtual Woman Up Conference, September 1, 2, 3. So not only do we have a fierce female, we have a fierce announcement at the end. All right, Sarah, take it away. Sweet. Uh, cool announcement. Last Woman Up 2019, we had 15 scholarship recipients. And we are proud to say that our Education Foundation has, has signed on to give 80 scholarship for this year's Woman Up, September 1, 2, 3. And the applications are now live. So we'll put the link in the comments. And if you know a person that wants to apply, the applicant <laughs> must be an active realtor in California. So this is a California initiative. Um, uh, you must commit to attending the full conference. Um, and then there's just a few other criteria that we wanna get to know you. Um, applications are open and the deadline to apply is August 14th. And if you have any questions, you can email me or you can email scholarship at car.org. And like I said, we'll be putting the link in the comments. So share it, apply 80, men and women are going to um, are going to get a, 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 a approved for this application. So we're so excited. Thank you to the Education Foundation and Brenda Meyer and all the people, so great. Keisha, Toller, all the people that are um, on that um, committee. So that's it for me. Now Leslie has um, some cool updates. Hi, everybody. I'm going to give the high level update and the slides that will be posted in the blog will give you a lot more detailed information on on what's going on. Uh, a little bit of rear view mirror. We came out with our press release for the June data yesterday. And as expected, when we had a 67% increase in pending sales the month before, we had a very, very strong uptick in sales. Uh, in June. It was a 42.4% increase. That was the biggest month to month we've ever recorded since starting to do this way back in, in 1979. And we actually had the highest uh, statewide median home price that we've ever recorded, 626, 170. Um, that's really related to two things. One, the bottom end of the market is shrinking because there is really no supply. And I know we're always talking about lack of supply, but there's really nothing down um, at that end of the market. So that activity shrunk about 20%. And at the very high end of the market, i.e. over 2 million, we actually had almost a 7% increase in sales. So part of what we're seeing is a little bit of a dance there between the low end um, overall and the high end. Um, we are also seeing interest in resort areas and second home areas. This work from home, work from anywhere, um, new world that we're all in is really precipitating um, choices. And again, these are people that can afford to do it um, both financially and also uh, with their work. Um, in terms of the macro indicators, just very high level. This has been a very interesting week. We had historic low uh, in terms of mortgage rates under 3%. 
incredible. Um, the retail sales numbers uh, came out. They were up 7.5% uh, from May. And the unemployment data that came out yesterday was basically flat um, from the week before. Now, a little bit of the downside uh, risk. We are seeing a spike. You can either call it more of the first wave or the second wave, but we are uh, in, in trouble here in California with the return of cases, the return of lockdown, um, more restrictions in some areas. The unemployment numbers in California have actually been going up um, the last couple of weeks. So we're looking at, at more risk on the downside right now in terms of how long we are gonna be in more of a retreat mode. We have the um, unemployment assistance expiring um, between now and the end of July. So, you know, uh, it's, it's a little bit hard to gauge the second half of this year, although I will tell you with the strength in pendings, we're gonna see um, some really good numbers in July uh, as well. So anyway, I think the market is doing as well as it can. It's not us, it's what's happening uh, around us. So stay tuned, thank you. I love that, it's not us, it's not <laughs> us. <laughs> so good. Not us this time. <laughs> Okay, so let's dig into an amazing conversation with our special guest of the hour, Pat Heller. I'm going to read her bio for those of you who do not know this amazing woman. So Pat is currently an executive vice president at Compass on the west side of Los Angeles. She oversees five offices. She previously was an owner of Gibson International prior to selling to Compass in 2018. She's been a leader in real estate and, and co coaching and mentoring for over two decades. So much divine wisdom in this beautiful woman. I, I love this quote from her. My passion has always been mentoring and empowering tremendous talent in our industry to, high, to highest levels of inspired success and vibrancy possible in their businesses and lives. I reside in real estate, but in truth, I am a strategic growth partner to those I collaborate with. Isn't that beautiful? Love that. Love that. <laughs> so in addition to managing and operating her local offices, she's now developed a role running various California mindset and growth classes for agents and hosting business growth workshops. Pat is at this stage in her career where she is focused on building her mentoring role both within Compass and on her own on a personal mission to empower women in growth and voice through collaborating, sharing wisdom, and sending a new strong ripple effect out into the world for good. Woo! Welcome, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am so glad to be here. And speaking of a ripple effect, that is exactly what you're creating with Woman Up. So love it and love contributing and being a part of it. Yeah. So tell us what you've been up to the past few months. Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> is that a leading question? You know, same old, same old, huh? <laughs> yeah, same old, same old. I was just talking to a group a little while ago about in January, could we have ever imagined? So it's, it's been a whirlwind, but a beautiful whirlwind in, in my impression. Pivot was a word that's way overused now, but in the very beginning of our shelter in place, there was a lot of determination and decision how we want to lead or how I want to lead. And so self-leadership, which was full of creativity and connection and honesty, I think it, I've been in a place of many, many, many Zoom calls. I have two a week with the 250 agents that I work with, uh, one on Monday and one on Friday, discussing different things each time, but filling everyone with the most recent updates from, from CAR, from you, from our attorney, and also about how do we virtually do business now? And what are the wins people are having? And trying to keep everyone be that glue for everyone, the soul for everyone, if you will. Because I think what I've realized is I have much more attendance now on my Zoom meetings than I ever did in person. So I remind everyone there's an intimacy and there is a connection. Even though we can't physically touch, we are touching hearts. And so I've been up to a lot of that and I've loved holding the conversations with thought leaders and business leaders. I've been astounded at how willing everyone is to have the honest conversation 
and to chip in and help out and be a part of sharing wisdom with each other. And so I'm feeling in this time of difficulty because it's been very trying. It's also important for me to meet everyone where they are. And of my 250, everyone's in a different place as, as are every one of the leaders that I work with. So it's meeting people where they are, but then also offering this like tweak and reframe about what are we learning? We're creating our own new future here. You know, I think the new normal isn't a normal yet, but I and you and we all get to create where we're going. So that's kind of my personal mission, along with what do I want to do for the rest of my life? What do I want to do with my time? Nothing's for take nothing for granted. Nothing's forever. And what am I doing? And I think everyone's looking at that. How am I using my time and energy? Because it's on me. And I'm the one that gets to talk about what is most important. Oh my gosh, Pat, did you wake up uh, just, you know, like that? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I, or, you know, I, I, I heard so many great opportunities in what you just said. And I love how you said meeting people where they are. And I'd love to dig, dig, dig in deeper to what that looks like. But I also want to know, like, did you have to take a moment, like, to pivot, as you said, I, I know we overuse it, I know I overuse it, but how did you make that change and, and t take this huge, crazy pandemic and turn it into those opportunities that you just laid out for us? Well, I, I think, Sarah, for me, there's something um, in me that when I realize I have 250 people that are all in different places, and they, I, I sensed immediately this desire and need to reach out. And so the, for the first couple of days, it was very surreal in the beginning, if we all can remember back. It was very surreal. And I remember feeling how off my biorhythms were because I always got up at 5.30 in the morning, went to work out, did my workout, came home, did my ritual and blah, 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 and was never home. And so now I was home all the time and I needed to reinvent the workout. I needed to reinvent my biorhythms and my whole energy. And once I kind of started to get my arms around that, I realized so many people were struggling in a way that I wasn't. Um, they were homeschooling. They had a spouse at home at the same time. They were trying to work with everyone around and keep their energy up. And there's a myriad of things. And so I, something happened in me inside. There, uh, there was one good, there was many good things and a couple that I needed to work on after that. But I went into like high gear of how do I work with everyone and make it happen? So I quickly learned Zoom, got on Zoom and got everyone together and then started doing those regularly. And it was infectious. The, um, the feedback, body language, and, and comments and emails. And then I realized, okay, together we can lead through this and it needs to be very transparent and very honest. And so it just kind of came naturally as it has probably for all of us as we switch into that. And I think really realizing our purpose. I mean, for me, my purpose was, my mission was, there are 250 people here that all have a different thing going on in their life. And all of them, all of us need to figure out not what are we doing in the very beginning, how are we being? Because however I'm showing up in my energy is what I'm gonna be able to create and accomplish in that day. And I've watched it still, there've been like five phases I've seen. You know, We started in surreal and then went to um, kind of stuck and feeling upset about it and then um, hang on, you know, just kind of hanging in there. And then it was go time, if we remember, <laughs> and it's been astounding go time. And now it's again, this interruption. So I'm working with people right now with the people that I love about acceptance and our ability in resilience to be not only resilient, but creative. And I remind everyone every day there's our self leadership, our leadership role, and then there's our social self. And the more we can stay in leadership self, 
and really focusing on how am I showing up to help everyone around me, my family, my kids, my clients, and others. It helps us stay out of the social self that can get caught up in the noise and negativity um, with other people that doesn't help anyone. Oh my God, I love that you said that because I totally have two selves, right? My leadership self and I see that social self and that like person that wants to complain popping through every once in a while. And I love that reminder of just, you know, kind of what value am I br can I bring to the table? I yeah. love that. Well, and I think it's, all, it's also knowing safety, how you can reach out to whomever to vent when you need to. Sorry, Leslie. No problem, no problem. I was just gonna segue into the challenges part because, um, you know, you talked about meeting people where they are. You know, we've been doing surveys every week and, you know, for a couple of weeks, we asked people's opinions about whether things were locked down too long or not long enough or whatever. Anyway, every week it, looked like a third, a third, a third, you know, like there was no consensus within the, right. you know, organization. So you have all that going on and all this fear and insecurity and then the income fragility and what's going to happen. So how do you navigate all that? And how did you navigate it for yourself? Um, I think how I've navigated it really for everyone is to just be in the conversation and talking it through. I think it's so important for everyone to feel that they have a safe space to reach out. And what I've found for me and for others, it, for, we have to find someone who's safe. And what I mean by safe is someone that will not just commiserate with us, but will hold us to what our own capabilities are inside. Because you're right, Leslie, there are people that are really scared about what's going to happen with them financially and what's going to happen with their family. And through conversations, when we're able to work through that, we discuss it and it's real and it's today. And there are also two things or one baby step they can take in action to do something that's going to create action to, to get them out of that. And, and doing something else. There were ways to make money in the middle of this or to do business. But at first we have to be open to that. Right. And then I think the other thing I've worked with some on and a lot of us have been doing is working on, okay, how can I give back to others? Because if I can reach out to someone and I can be able to talk with them and share, I feel a little better because that person talks to me about okay, yeah, that's real and I hear you and I feel it and what can we do here? Let's try this. And then maybe how can we help someone else that's really struggling? Because then I feel empowered and it's feeling that there's a way through it, even though we don't know what's coming next. There, through, through feeling empowered and feeling a little bit more like I have control over something, I think that has helped most people through to the other side. And the other thing I've done with them is something that someone offered me one time a while ago when I was really stuck and struggling in something. They said to me, Pat, are you okay in this very present moment? And I was like, yeah, I'm afraid of what's going to happen tomorrow, but I'm, I'm okay right now. And when they could get me there, they were like, take it one minute at a time. Take it one day at a time. There will be times where it will over, you know, the, the grief or whatever I was going through at the time will overcome you. And then there'll be a moment when you're okay. And this has been a time of grief for people. Um, and it's been the process of that, of letting go and not having control over where we are. And so there's, pro there's, there's stages of that. And then it's learning the acceptance and to allow, you know, I talked to somebody this morning, one day's great, next day's not so great. And just knowing it's okay. And talk to somebody that's safe because that's tomorrow so will be a better day and they will help you get there. I love that. That, that actually leads beautifully into the questions, uh, the question we love to ask around advice and resources. So you've got a lot of agents depending on you right now and and mentees because you're focused on mentoring others and and doing um, things outside of your 
business role. So right. help share, sprinkle some, some advice over the community today. What resources are you, are you telling people to check out most often, advice, et cetera? So it, it's kind of different for each person with me because each person is different. But, but what I will generally do is work with someone if they're willing to do this, if they're open. First of all, it's open mindset as much as we can rather than fixed mindset because our stories that we all make up are just stories. And boy, when I'm making up a story, it can be very compelling. It is <laughs> and my self-talk can be extremely compelling and it can be right. completely irrational. So it's just keeping that open mindset to what might be possible. That's one thing I will work with, with pretty much everyone on. And another one is solution orientation, outcome orientation, rather than what's going on right now today. Because <laughs> the news and the noise is what's going on right now today. And it's toxic for me anyway. So if I allow, like I did in the very beginning, a half a day to tune into the news, then I've lost my energy for probably almost all day. So it's kind of picking and choosing what I prioritize to put into my body. Right. You know, that's one of the biggest challenges for me is that I need to know what's going on. So I start the day with a couple of newspapers and go through them all. And literally some days I've just finished doing that and I sit and cry for a little bit and then I, you know, move on. But it's just, um, you know, for some of us, it's not possible to do that, but I couldn't agree more. You've got to really decide what needs, what you need to let in and what you don't need to let in. Yeah. And then maybe plug into some people I'll work with plugging into somebody that inspires them um, a quick podcast or on audible, something real quick. And you don't have to spend a ton of time, but something to bring joy. Another thing I've worked with some people on is find something to laugh about. Amen. Because I know for me, I take things too seriously at times. Find something funny that you do or in your own what's going on for you because that kind of helps but there's days when some people don't feel like that i have one client that's not in our business but that i encouraged her to go in she's got three kids at home she's homeschooling she runs her own business um she's got her husband at home who was out of work at the time so i said go in the bathroom turn on the shower and they think you're taking a shower and spend 15 minutes talking to a girlfriend or doing whatever you want to do online, but get your own personal time. So it's just different for each person, but it's a lot of honesty. And, you know, I think there's been a lot more occasion for vulnerable, open, honest communication and conversation. I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we actually wanted to talk to you a little bit more about that because like, everybody's different and people relate differently. And one of the big takeaways I have from knowing you and, and I think everybody who hasn't, who doesn't know you hearing you today is you are very, you say it with love, but you are very direct. I mean, you are a no BS communicator. And I think that transparency builds a trust, you know, so there can be effective communication, but I'm just wondering how you see your role in that. I, it's absolutely correct, Leslie, because I, I believe that unless I'm willing to be 100% honest, then nobody really deserves to trust me. Um, so it is kind of an I'm like a no drama zone and a no BS zone. And at times it has gotten me, you know, there are times when I'll have one of my agents that won't like that I tell them this should be, could have been done a different way. And what we really need to do is now go back and correct this and be upfront and be honest and make it right. Um, so there are those moments, but they know because they live through that and then they know, okay, that is the right thing to do and you know, on and on. I struggle sometimes with other people that I need to interface with that maybe don't share my beliefs in being so totally transparent and open, but I still need to be that way. And so I've learned and it has had to come through learning to use voice. Because as you and I talked about before, there were moments where I just kept my mouth shut and didn't voice because I was the only one in the room who wanted to voice the way I wanted to voice. And oftentimes maybe the only one that was female. 
Um, so learning to use voice with love, but with honesty. And you're right, probably sometimes more bluntly than maybe people would want. But now, where did you grow up? East Coast. I grew up in New Jersey. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I could feel it. It's well, awesome. We love, we love the no BS. <laughs> Everybody in the chat's like, yes, that's my mantra. No BS, no drama. Um, Pat, I want to go back to something you said. It really struck a chord with me because you, it sounded like you were, t you said you were talking to somebody and sounded like you were talking to a therapist because that sounded like a conversation I had with my therapist <laughs> 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 and it was really about like you know what what you could be doing what are what are you doing right now how can other um, leaders tap into your strength like what are you doing to preserve your wellness and 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 health during this time and what advice can you give to other leaders who might be struggling with that for me, it's really important, Sarah, to, to get my own um, well-being time. So I get up early, and instead of doing my workout immediately, you know, I walk. And I walk, I, I'm near the beach, I'm at the beach, so I walk on the beach, but I listen to books on, on Audible, and I pick and choose the books that really inspire me, that are talking about who am I being? Who are we all being? So I do that in the morning and then I come back and have my own personal time where I journal real quickly. And I know for a lot, we don't like to do that. I'm at times off and on and off and on that, but I'm, so, I'm doing it for five minutes or less. And, um, and then I'm getting going with my day, but see, that gets me started. I do, part of my journaling is my question to myself, what great is going to happen today? And what will make today wonderful? And who am I being today? Because for me, that's the most important thing because I am not the most patient person. Leslie pointed out I'm blunt. I'm also not the most patient person. So I need to practice patience all day long because I'm talking with someone else who needs to spew and vent and have someone there that's got amazing energy for them. And so by <laughs> two in the afternoon, I at times need that little bit of a regroup. So it's important yeah. for me to reflect back, who am I being today? I love that. And, Asking you know, a question. I mean, who, how, how many of us do that, right? Who am I being today? I think that's, that's really great advice. What, uh, what books are you listening to right now? I'm listening to um, the ego, um, ego is the enemy. And I'll tell you in two seconds, cause I've got it right here on Audible. I just finished another one that I loved. Um, Stillness is the key. That was a great one for me by Ryan Holiday. Um, Untamed. Ooh, we, we love, love that. that one. And there's one by Gay Hendricks, The Big Leap. And I, I love, books where it gives us little tools of what to watch in life. Yeah. Um, the other day on my walk, we were it, one of them was about time. And we all think there is such a thing as time. This is getting frou-frou, I know. But time okay. is chosen by me. And urgency is chosen by me. So for me to ever complain about there's not enough time, or I don't have time, or I'm too late, no. It's what have I done? Who have I been during my day? where that's what I've set myself up for. So just things like that help me in my day to be the best me I can be. Because then at night, I feel better. I can tune it out. And again, just kind of regroup for myself and then look back at the day. Okay, did I do a great job? What was great? And what, would, what could I have done a little bit differently? That's so good. Well, you know, we actually were talking about that earlier in the green room about, you know, showing up as you choose who you show up as and you choose the words that, that uh, you sprinkle out on, on the planet. Um, one of the things that I actually heard in a book recently related to one of the things you said earlier about the stories we tell ourselves. And it basically said, we're in storytelling mode in our mind when it isn't something we can watch listen to or read oh, so 
And, and it was so really, it was so, it's such a great flag for me. If I start going down this rabbit hole, like I didn't get this because, and mm -hmm. if I can't fill that, that blank in with something that was written to me in an email that was stated to me on a phone call, or that was sent to me in a video, it's a story. Right. I don't have a yes. fact. And, and so it's this time while we are in our sheltering in our homes and where we don't actually get to be around people when they're giving us a yes or a no, it's very easy to fall into that storytelling. So I really loved, I really loved that. And there's others inside uh, the stream that really loved that as well. So as, mm -hmm. as we um, bring this around and close this conversation, which is always my least favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> talk for a long time we, today we really could uh would you uh, after after all the things we've talked about today what are your final words of wisdom and advice for those who are listening today um i think maybe a couple of things that um i have reflected on and learned during this time one is it's so important to take this was time I had probably wanted for a long time. Talk about stories. I told myself for years, I really want to take a couple months off, but I just can't do it. You know, and, and all of those stories. Well, now I've had the time for reflection in the midst of the craziness and being so busy. I've had time for reflection and I've made determinations of how I am going to show up and who I'm going to be and what I'm changing in my life going forward. And it's exciting. Yeah. So that's one thing I, I offer up for everyone to look at, to lean in and, and um, be curious in an open, good way with your self-talk about what am I learning here and what do I want to adopt? What do I want to release and what do I want to adopt going forward? Because mm -hmm. we have the chance to do it right now. So that's one. And I think the other thing is I have learned through um, setting up my, starting the conversations I was having within the business community and doing that all on my own, I reached out to people and I was shocked at how everyone was willing to participate and contribute. So often I think we start to, or I used to think, I'm in this alone or, or I have to do this and be really strong and independent and get it all done myself. No, collaboration is absolutely what I love. And now for the future, I always want to do things with other like-minded people because together we're stronger than we are individually. And I think this time in SIP has really shown me there are new ways to communicate that are just as powerful, although I miss the other ones. And I can, I can really recreate and collaborate in a way where I don't have to ever do anything alone again. Mm. And so I mean, that's, that's been a, a lesson that's from That's what me. Woman Up is all about. Yeah, <laughs> but it's been a profound lesson for me. You know how sometimes you hear it and you know it, but you don't own it within you? Yes. Until you try something and it's proven. Talk about manifesting something. I said, I wanna do these conversations. Every person I reached out to said yes, and oh. let me help you, let's do it. And, oh, and it turned wow. out to be a really fun, amazing experience. You know, yeah. when you're home alone and working, it's so, I don't know, get, it's so easy to get to a dark place, you know, because you're yeah. not just able to walk into someone's office or do lunch or whatever. And when I get the, you know, when I get to a day where I maybe don't have a full calendar, I've got work to do, but you really have to reach out to people and it changes everything. The whole energy in your day changes because of that human connection. So thank you, Slack. I just wanted to know, go ahead. Go ahead. Pat. No, 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 no. I just wanted to share something in the, in the chat, but please. No, the only other thing I'm thinking is I have learned how much more natural things can be. I've saved because I'm no longer doing my nails. You know, there, there's a million ways that we have learned <laughs> how things that I thought, talking about an open mindset, there are so many other things that we can all, you know, lean into and, and change and create. Right. right. Yeah. Amen. Pat, you've made a difference. I mean, the, the chat is going berserk here, but I, I wanted to share something that Kimberly Collins just, just shared. She's like, I needed to hear this so much right now 
Oh. And so beautiful. Thank you, Kimberly, for tuning in. Um, we're here every Friday. Um, but thank you so much, Pat. That is just amazing. Just amazing words of wisdom and advice. We can yes. be here all day, right? Yes, I love it. I think I saw, um, Leslie, are you going to share what Pat Veeling shared in the, in the comments? It's kind I of your lane. I can't see it. So, so I'm so going to read this. Need to, you need to do it because I'm looking for it and I don't know where it went. Okay, so I'm <laughs> going to share this. So Pat has been sharing uh, the last couple of shows some cool numbers. So I'm going to read these and let the numbers ladies talk about this. Um, through June 30, Pat's firm's CLAW MLS year-over-year -year volume is up 23% and units are up 17%. Her active per license production is an amazing 9.3 million annually. You are hosting amazing. an amazing industry leader. Thank you for sharing that, Pat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, wow. So kudos. Woo! Not only yeah. are you, Thank you. One of the things, mindset. I love it. One of the things I've said for years that is so ridiculous, but it's so true is you know, I start my speeches and I say, look, this is not an opt out for why you're going to have the year you're going to have. You know, there's going to be more than enough transactions for you in your area, your niche for you to have the best year you've ever had. So let's really take this as a foundation for having conversations with clients, not as a prediction for what your year is going to look like, like you can go and make it happen. And I think that's one of the things that makes real estate such an attractive career for op for entrepreneurs, right? Because you oh. can make it happen regardless of the market conditions. That's right. And this has been the great equalizer for, for agents and for everyone. Uh, there are people doing so well right now. And it's it's all, you know, just being in it and and said acceptance mindset and yeah. adjusting and making it happen yeah yes yes oh so good okay are, are you ladies ready to do the reveal i mean i know pat Ooh. knows i'm i'm ready i'm wanting it okay <laughs> so okay i'm gonna i'm gonna share my screen uh in just a quick second because we're gonna watch a little video um this video is not woman up eyes yet. This is not our woman up world. However, it is a great example of what we are going to experience in September. So we've teased about this many times over the last six weeks that we're going virtual, but it won't be Zoom. And what does that mean? Well, that means we've chosen to have what we're calling a woman up world created for us and for the event. We really wanted an opportunity to create a space for our attendees, for all of you, the women and men who come alongside one another and share wisdom and support and love for one another. We wanted you to have an opportunity to, yes, attend the conference and hear great topics, hear and participate in conversations. But we also wanted you to be able to walk out the door of the sessions and sit down at a table and have a conversation with someone in your own space. So in other words, network and connect with each other like we know it. each and every one of you who's attended the conferences before has absolutely said is one of the number one things you love about the conference. So we have um, contracted with the company Verbella. And many of you have likely heard of Verbella. They host uh, Harvard Business School's <clears throat> virtual campus, several university campuses, and now, of course, lots of events. So without further ado, I'm going to share the screen. We're going to show the video and then we'll share a little bit more. <laughs> okay.
Okay. <laughs> you saw it. You have seen it. You've seen what the virtual world is going to look like. Yes, for those of you who have, have played The Sims games in the past, you will have your own avatar. You will be able to dress her. You will be able to choose your hair color and your eye color. You will be able to wear red shoes or black shoes, flip-flops, heels, boots, whatever your heart desires. You will be able to show up and experience it through your own eyes, not looking at your own face. So you'll be able to engage with one another. You'll be able to raise your hands. You'll be able to shake. You'll be able to touch each other in the virtual world. Uh, we'll be able to dance. Uh, Sarah is getting really, really good at the break dance. So <laughs> <laughs> you will see her doing that. Uh, you also can do the capoeira. Uh, and really, it truly is all about engaging and being in the moment. And what we love about this space, not only is it different, and we love different, we love to bring unique experiences to all of you. But one of the biggest things that we know women experience when they attend a conference is the comparison trap. You walk in the room and you think, Ugh. what do I look like compared to everyone else? Yes. And you don't have that here. Yep. Everyone's the same size. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to worry about that, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, we are going to be sharing all sorts of great information over the next few weeks, helping you go in, get your avatar built. You can, and the good news is, is you can build your avatar and even learn and walk around the space now. It'll all translate into the Woman Up world for the conference in September. So for those of you who are feeling a little tech scared at this point, thinking, what? Don't worry. Uh, the Woman Up team is going to be posting uh, an, at least an hour, uh, hour and a half a week where we'll be in the world. We're going to have our meetings in there. So if you want to come in and walk around and need some help, we're going to help you with that because we want this to be one of the most memorable years for Woman Up because we took this uh, uh, situation and flipped it upside down and created something outrageously fun. Woo! I love it. We also have our wave makers that will help as well. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. yes. Our wave makers. So absolutely. And our sponsors. Our yeah. Sponsors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very excited. Yes. Very exciting. Yes. It's, I'm super excited. Again, we'll drop uh, some links in. We've got that video up on the website so you can see that. For those of you who haven't gotten your tickets and we're kind of waiting to see what it looked like, get your tickets. We've we're already, I think when I went in today, it looked like 80% of the VIP swag kits were already purchased. <laughs> so make sure you head over to IamWomanUp.com, poke around. You can see some of the topics we're going to talk about. There's a link to get your tickets. Share it with your friends. Let's fill this virtual world with the most amazing avatars on the planet. And that's you. So IamWomanUp.com. We'll see you next Wednesday, everyone. Yes. Thank you, Pat. Yes. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much, you Pat. All for Thank you, everyone. Yes. Yes. Bye. Love you. Bye. See you soon. Bye.